Hey everyone, this is uh, Nitin Ramachandra from the NR Media Sports Show. Welcome, happy Tuesday, back with another episode. Please, fans, tune in. This is going to be a special one, a really inspiring one. Uh, we are live on iHeartRadio, Spotify, on all the podcast platforms. And fans, you already know about the speaker app, where you can ask questions on that app today on our phone. Uh, and today's guest, we have a former NFL defensive tackle who played for the Green Bay Packers, Michael Weich. He has an inspiring story. Please, like I said, buckle your, buckle your seatbelts, stay tuned. This is going to be an inspiring story. Um, he does a lot of great things off the field. Um, he has a book out there called Grief Through His Eyes. Uh, go check that out. Uh, he, it's an amazing book. And uh, please, uh, please check that out. And uh, Michael has a really inspiring story. I looked at the story, man. You got, you have an inspiring story. You worked hard uh, to get where you're at right now and be, playing football, your, your dream sport to play. And uh, Michael, thank you for joining the show on short notice. And uh, when, once uh, our team saw you reach out to us on LinkedIn, that's when I had to, they had to reach out to you to come on the show. And um, like I said, the book, uh, I looked at the book online. It's really, really inspiring what you did with that book and your story is really amazing. And, um, but Michael, thank you again. Uh, how are you and your family doing today? And welcome to the show. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, my family and I, we're doing, we're doing wonderful, man. Thank you for asking. Hey, no problem. And uh, let's sort of uh, tell our fans, uh, tell a little bit of, of of yourself, your background, and um, how you got into football, and tell about your inspiring story right off the bat. Well, um, I got into football uh, when I was in the eighth grade. My seventh grade, yeah, I tried to start my seventh grade year, but unfortunately, I got um, cut because uh, due to um, my affiliation with. Uh, things that I was doing in the streets and um, just, just being a knucklehead. Yeah. Um, I was, I was in the drug dealer really bad, uh, gun violence really bad. Um, you know, and just, uh, just running the street, just a product of my environment, you know, and um, football became a vehicle uh, uh, that I hopped in and um, that vehicle took me far took me out of the street life. It took me out of poverty. It took me, um, it showed me a new, a new avenue that I could take. It showed me a world bigger than just South Norfolk, Chesapeake, Virginia. Wow. Um, speaking of football, um, obviously you started in eighth grade and uh, were you, uh, do you play multiple positions uh, when you were younger and before playing defensive tackle? Uh, no, I, I honestly, uh, I, I just played the defensive line. Okay. Um, I started off as like a uh, defensive end, and then uh, the bigger I got, the more stronger I got, they moved me inside. Wow. But I've always been a defensive line. Mm -hmm. So tell our fans, and uh, obviously uh, the, the the situations you, you've been through and um, obviously getting to bad moments in your life, and how, how tough is that for you? Um, being on the, I mean, obviously it's tough, but what was it, what did you learn from that to be able to overcome that situation, being on the streets and get involved in horrible situations, but being able to get out of it and focus on the important things in your life? How did you deal with all that? Um, You definitely had to have a, a tremendous amount of focus um, because uh, it's never, it's never easy uh, breaking a generational curse and, you know, getting out the hood, getting out the projects, um, is is not easy at all because um, you can easily get sucked back into it, um, because of things like, let's say, your family member may be involved in it, or your parents may have been involved in it back in the day, but the one thing about the streets, the streets never forget, you know, so, yeah. um you're automatically in it, even if you're not in, involved in it, you automatically got to come a person, become a person that you, um, even if you weren't built like that, you had to transform into that just to survive out there, not get killed, not get taken advantage of, not get bullied. Um, you had to become a very violent individual because of that. Or if not, you were going to get seriously hurt. And speaking of, yeah, can you talk talk about tell our fans about that situation and putting 
and then and then making your family worried about you and uh how what was it take us to that uh, moment, uh situation where the family um, was worried about you and um and and hoping you to get, get out of that situation talk about your family and how wh how tough is that that you put that on your family too um well um it wasn't that i put it on my family because everybody did their own thing yeah. everybody was into uh you know um they were doing their own thing like they were into you know alcohol they they, they abused alcohol they abused drugs mm -hmm. so nobody really had we, we didn't have to be to keep it real with you we didn't have nobody to to uh look up to oh. nobody was telling us to do the right thing my father you know was doing a 40 year prison sentence. My mother, um, she had a drug issue and uh, eventually um, a stroke kind of slowed her down because mm -hmm. she was not able to walk again for the rest of her life. Um, so um, she probably would have still been doing the same thing if that wouldn't have slowed her down because um, you know, it, it, the streets is addictive. Drugs are addictive, alcohol is addictive. So, um, and, and and I watch it take over and destroy some of my family, to be honest with you. I watched that. So we never had anybody to look up to, you know. So I was literally the first one to get out and um, do something with myself. I became the first to go to college in my family, the first to graduate college in my family. Um, so I had to I had to sacrifice a lot. And I also had to be very disciplined because I could have easily got sucked back in the street life. Not saying that I wasn't, not saying that I fully got out when I left South Norfolk, because that's not true. Mm -hmm. um, I still, my my money was still tied up in the streets and, you know, things like that. And it still was wrong. But um, it's hard to get out once you, that's all you know and you don't have, uh, Mr. Entrepreneur, Mr. Investor, Mr. Doctor. You got Mr. Dope Dealer that you're looking up to. So um, it is tough. And obviously you, uh, when you're playing, when you started playing football in, in uh, eighth grade, um, did you ever think maybe if you could, if you chose the right, I mean, before you went on the streets and uh, did, did everything to yourself looking back, um, if you chose, I mean, staying focused on football instead of going, well, switching into the bad uh, situations, did you think you still play right now in the NFL? No, I, I left the NFL. I chose to leave myself. Okay. I chose to leave myself due to uh, mental health. I needed to focus on my mental health. It was a lot of things that happened in my life that transpired. My nephew, um, one of the reasons my nephew, Jayante, um, who was a football player as well, who was following in my footsteps, who um, looked up to me as a father figure, um, he ended up getting um, shot and killed, um, and uh, that kind of that kind of sealed the deal for me. After all that I've been through, I was so strong for so long, and and um, that one kind of that one kind of that that actually that situation um, hit me harder than my mother passing away. Wow! Because um, hmm. we 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 kind of we kind of got a heads up with my mother, you yeah. know. I kind of had, I, I kind of braced myself for that blow, even though it didn't feel well still. But um, my nephew was, I I received a call when I was in the Packers locker room about to head to practice. I received a FaceTime call and I saw yellow tape everywhere. Wow. Yeah. So, um, so that one, um, that one kind of broke my back, and and um and that's when I went up to Coach McCarthy after after that practice, and I told him, you know, you know, regardless if you keep me or not, you know, um, this is this is it for me, you know, um, I'm ready to um, I need to go focus on my mental health, and um, and um, uh, by the time I was rehabilitated, um. I wanted to coach. I wanted to train players, mm. and um, and that's what I did. I created my own company, and I started training guys and investing. Wow, that's amazing! And uh, sorry for your loss, by the way. 
uh, with your mom and, and, your, and your nephew. It's really, really hard when, and someone goes through that and, um, but tell our fans, uh, actually, hold on. We have a comment already from one of our fans on this app. They said, man, you're, they're, they're already, um, well, they, they said this story is really inspiring and you're ready. Uh, and they said, thank you for sharing your story on this show today. So that's one of our fans, what they said just now. Thank so, you. Thank you. Yeah. So tell our fans, um, obviously in, um, some players do not get second chances after they've uh, been through some, uh, if they get involved in a horrible situation or a bad situation, but for you, how special was it to get a chance to continue playing football um, and also, especially the Packers giving you a chance to come into camp and showcasing your talent. Take us to that moment when Pac, Mark, uh, Mike, Coach Mike McCarthy um, and the rest of the coaching staff and, and the front office decided to bring you in and uh, to be involved and then showcase your talent. How special was that for you? Uh, that, was a, that was a moment for me. You know, um, that was an incredible moment for me because, uh, like I said, that, that was a uh, it was a lot of work put into that. It was a lot of effort. It was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears put in there. And, you know, before I got there, um, I was in a couple situations that um, I was misinterpreted, you know, right. um, uh, by ha by having people around me that meant me no good, by um, trying to end relationships that, uh, that um, meant me no good, but it backfired on me because, you know, they could no longer be a part of my life. So they tried to take shots at my football career. And, you know, it was just so much going on, man. It was like I had so much going on and then I never really talked about it. I just let people think what they think because, you know, I that's just how I like, I don't really I'm not a I'm not a people pleaser, I'm a God pleaser. So yeah. um so I really didn't care about what anybody think. And you know, I knew I was gonna have my time to express myself, you know, eventually. But I had a lot of things going on and um um, I ended up in one of uh, I I ended up in Coach Tony, Co I'm sorry, I ended up in Coach Tony Dungy's life group class. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, after going through his class, I decided to um, cause I was still this when I was in college. I was still um, I fully didn't get the street life out of me. I was still like I said, my money was still in the streets. I wasn't in the streets because I was playing football, but my money was. And um, after going through his life group class, um, I I decided to commit my life to doing the right thing. And um, I eventually fully, fully, fully got out of the street life. Fully. Oh. So, um, and that's when um, great things started to happen. And and uh, Green Bay eventually called. And that was, I don't know about everybody else, but yeah, you know, I felt like I got drafted at the, when they when they gave me a phone call. Like, I, it was emotional because um, all that I had to go through growing up as a kid, and I finally got that moment, whether, it was gonna, whether that moment was going to last for five minutes or 20 years. Um, I was so grateful, man. And, um, and I, I already knew when I got there, something just came across me. It was like, it's time to write a book. It's time to, it's time to start writing because, um, um, this is, this is what it's time for you to tell your story. Wow. Um, if I'm not mistaken, was, um, Mike, uh, what was Colin Cole was, was there that year when you got picked up Colin Cole? Uh, I, I don't, I don't recall that name. Now. Who is that? Like a coach? So defender, he was a player for the Packers, Colin Cole, or uh, no, I don't, I don't recall him. Um, I came in with Aaron Jones. Okay, Aaron Jones. Okay, Jamal Williams, Kevin King. Yeah, Matravius Adams. Um, uh, I came in with um, uh, Taysom Hill. Uh, okay, and Rashawn Gary was there too. No, nah, Rashawn wasn't there then. Oh. No, nah, Rashawn wasn't there. He came after me. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I came in there with those guys. Uh -huh. Mike Daniels was still there. Oh, Mike Daniels, okay, okay. Mike Daniels was still there. Um, of course, Rogers was still there. Yeah. Um, Jamal Williams, mm -hmm. did I already say him? Yeah, Jamal Williams. Yeah, Jamal, Jamal, Jamal Williams was still there. 
Um, who else? Uh, Quadzilla. Yeah. I think uh, AJ Dillon was there. Um, Devontae Adams was still there. De Devontae was still there. Um, yeah, it was it was a lot of guys still there. Alan Alan Lazar was still there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. A lot of guys still there. Yeah. So uh, once you came into camp and tell our fans, what was that experience like being around those players you just mentioned? And obviously, Aaron Rodgers, one of the best quarterbacks in the league, and still going at it with the Jets now. Um, even with Lazard is with the Jets also, and but. What was it like just to be surrounded by that, that that those type of players and also being coached by Mike McCarthy and uh, he's the coach now. My I'm a Cowboys fan, so he's a coach there now. Um, but what's that like? What was that like for you just to be surrounded with that uh, with the support system there? It was an unbelievable experience. Um, coach McCarthy was great, uh, great down to earth guy, great teacher of the game. Um, so of so is uh, Jerry Montgomery. Um, I really enjoyed him. And the knowledge he poured into me, um, I was able to take that with me and uh, use that to train my players now on the defensive line. So I learned a lot from Jerry Montgomery. Um, Winston, Winston Moss was there. He was a University of Miami guy. Um, Alonzo Highsmith was there. He was he was in the front office. Uh, he He's actually the reason I was there. Oh, wow. um, and, uh, Alonzo Highsmith and uh, Melvin Braddon. Uh, that without those two, I probably wouldn't have been there. Um, mm -hmm. um, so um, uh, the coaching staff was great. I learned a lot from both of them. And, um, man, um, yeah, it was just an unbelievable experience, man. It was it was an experience that I'd be able to tell my grandchildren when I get old. And like, it, was, it was it's an experience that a lot of people don't get. And I think they I think fans and people take that for granted, like, Yep. Like this is a once in a lifetime. Like one percent of college pay players are gonna experience this, and uh, like I said, mine. Of course, mine didn't last as long as uh, Aaron Rodgers or Reggie White or or some of the other players. Um, you know that wasn't my story. You know my story was, um, hey, I'm gonna let you taste this, but then I want you to go inspire. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Uh I mean, like I said before, like some some players don't get second chances, and for you to get the second chance, really, really yeah. amazing. And um, obviously, after what you've been through, and um, and then being in the streets, and and getting the opportunity to play football with the Packers and the historic franchise, um, and get that experience, and that must have been special for you and uh, the rest of your family there. But um, talk about obviously transitioning. Uh, after your football career, you're a CEO and you're you coach uh, younger players too. So what what's that been like for you? Tell our fans what's that been like for you coaching younger players and keeping them, telling, giving them advice and uh, telling about your story, sharing your stories to them, and making sure they stay focused, uh, get the education they need, and then also play. I mean, obviously get to the goal they want to be, which is NFL. But uh, what was what's that been like for you? Oh, it's been, it's been uh, therapeutic to me, to be honest with you. Uh, they actually my therapy, man. My all my all my uh, clients. Um, I I didn't know because I was in the trucking after I left for a little bit. I started just going on the road with my my cousins because my family is big in trucking, and my friends they all in truck drivers. So I, I I just hopped in the truck with one of my friends one day, and we just started working together, and. I just kept getting receiving messages from these kids like, uh, man, I'll do anything to train with you. I'll do anything to train with you. And I'm like, I'm not trying to train no kids. I'm, I'm done with football because I, I didn't want nothing to do with football after I left uh, Green Bay because I left the game with a heavy heart, you mm -hmm. know. So um, so I didn't want nothing to do with football. But uh, one of my friends called me up. His name was uh, Demetrius Cook. Um, and he, he said, Mike, I really think you would do a great job training kids. Even if you don't want to coach, I think you should be training kids. You got a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of experience to give back. And he said it, and I kind of like it went in one ear out the other. I'm like, ah, right, whatever. But then some kids started DMing me 
Mm-hmm. And it was like, man, can you, can you can I get some pointers from you? And one thing led to another. We ended up out on the field. Then I just got that itch back. And I'm like, dang, I, I really missed this. No, I'm not going to play anymore, mm-hmm. but I could teach the game. And after that first training session with my first client, I said, yeah, yeah it, it, this is where I need to be. I, I, like football, football is life for me, and the game has done so much for me. And, and I'm willing to, I'm, I'm ready to be one of the best uh, defensive line trainers that ever did this thing. And um, right now, now I got guys that are NFL guys flying in to Virginia just to come train with me now, mm-hmm. which is unbelievable. It just happened out of nowhere, and I'm like, like some agents called me and was like. Hey, um, can you train one of my clients? I'm like, he's gonna fly in here. And they flew in, got a hotel, and met me at my training facility, and 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 I was just I was blown away. Yeah. I was blown away by it. Cause I was like, okay, it's something here. This is where I need to be. And now it's, you know, it's I'm, I'm training guys from NFL, college high school and middle school. Oh. And it's been nothing but fun. I got a couple of offers now to actually become a coach, hmm. but um, I like the training thing a lot, you know, <laughs> cause I'm, I'm, my, I'm my own boss. And so, um, so, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what the future holds. Um, I may be on a team, you know, uh, soon. Um, I may not, you know, cause like I said, I got my own business, Michael White Enterprises. Yep. We uh we specialize in um training um defensive line and outside linebackers to perform at an elite level. And um I've been having fun and I and I still call some my former D line coaches that coach me and I ask them for advice and um and uh they give me pointers on being a coach and you know, I'm still learning. You never too you never don't never think you too old or that you know everything that you you know that you can't ask no questions and stuff like that. So they've turned me into an amazing, along with, you know, my own coaching philosophy. I'm adding their, I'm adding all of their intelligence um, to me as well. And um, it's really making my players better. I've got all American players that I've helped become all American, all state, um, freshman all Americans. Um, so it's really going really well, man. And I, um, I'm, I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful that. Um, these kids reached out to me because without them and my friend Demetrius, um, I probably wouldn't be um, probably wouldn't be uh, coaching right now. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. And uh, I, I kind of got pushed back into it. <laughs> <laughs> are those yeah. are those offers from NFL teams? Uh, not yet, not okay. yet. Um, big time D one schools and um, uh, a lot of other colleges as well. A lot of high school, of course, you know, um, but a lot of big time D1 schools have reached out to me and uh, asking me, hey, man, I'd love for you to come board, be a pass rush specialist for us or, you know, teach a D line or a DN coach or defensive tackle coach. So uh, I'm getting, I'm getting buzzed now because, uh, uh, you know, some league guys are flying in town and training with me and reposting me because I don't post a lot on social media. So uh, I, I, I like, the word of mouth thing more than anything because, uh, you know, you try to keep your secret sauce, your secret sauce. Yeah, and, 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 you know, too many, I feel like too many people expose too many things on social media right now. And um, that, 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 that defeats the purpose of you being unique and special. I think that, you know, I think all they need to do here is the testimonials and you want to see what I'm about. Uh, come in for a free training session and uh, you'll see why I'm different than everybody else. You're hard nose. You, you coach them hard. Uh, I'm a teacher. Okay. I'm more of a teacher than anything, but um, we train at an elite level. Yeah. We train at an elite pace, but um, they hear me though. It ain't a bunch of yelling like ah, oh, you know, it ain't all of that. No, it's it's teaching. I'm teaching the game, but we I'm teaching them how to move at a certain play at a certain pace, and I'm also teaching them how to train properly. You know, most people don't train properly. Most people think that um, – because I get a lot of kids come up to me and they ask me, um, you know, like, uh, 
oh, oh, what type of drills? What type? I see the players you coach and um, you trained and they're doing really well. What type of drills do you do? I said, we do defensive line drills. Oh. And they said, no, 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 no. What, what, no, what type of drills you do? Because because Instagram give you this, this, um, uh. like, oh, like, oh, working out at the beach and, uh. you know, all these cone drills that really doesn't translate to the game. And um, what these kids are missing now is uh, – not understanding that the basics is where the gold is. So we practice the basics and we, we master the basics. Uh, one of my favorite quote, one of my favorite quotes is um, by Bruce Lee. He said, yeah. um, I don't fear a man who, who practiced 10,000 kicks once. Yeah. I fear a man who practiced one kick 10,000 times. <laughs> so, so uh, I install that in my, in my guys, we're going to, we're going to do the basics, but we're going to do it rep after rep after rep and I think that's what separate my guys from a lot of other people is that we focus on reps we focus on teaching the technique right and we focus on repping at an elite like pace like we're trying to hit 10,000 reps <laughs> we're literally trying to hit 10,000 reps mm -hmm. and um and I think that's what's separating my guys because we're we're doing more reps than anybody and not only are we doing more reps than everybody but we're doing it the correct way and then we're doing reps. So, hey, you you can make a great uh, college coach or NFL coach, man. Someday, um, I hope you got the opportunity, man. Coach co coaching college or coaching NFL because remember Sharif Floyd, a former uh, former NFL defensive tackle. Floyd, he went to um, Florida, right? Yeah, he's. Uh, yeah, I remember Sharif Floyd. Yeah, he's now on the Cowboys coaching staff uh, this year. Wow. Yeah, so I'm I'm happy for him. I'm happy that we have we have him on the staff. He's pretty good. He's uh feel like he's gonna be a good coach, and I feel like you can relate to that. Um, um, if you want to become like a pass rushing coach or a defensive tackle coach, um, I feel like you can make a, a great one. So Mike, whoever's tuning in, whoever NFL or college team, please go reach out to Michael right now. Go get him on your staff because uh you can make a great coaching uh co uh, co uh be a great coach on those staffs, so the college staff or NFL. Thank you, thank you. Um, so tell our fans though, what does it mean to you when the when the younger players or young younger kids reach out to you before you reach out to them? What does that mean to you uh, that they want to re reach out to you, take time, uh, and uh, reach out to you to get some advice? So what does that mean to you when the kids reach out, not 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 the coaches? Um, it means a lot to me. Uh, um, and I'm 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 very passionate about um, mode the new generation. Um, I'm very passionate about that. I'm very passionate about teaching them about life skills as well. Um, so um, teaching them all the mistakes that I've made, mm -hmm. teaching them all the mistakes that uh, other NFL players have made, you know, teaching them the correct way. So like Aaron Donald, okay, I want you to be better than Aaron Donald. So I'm going to train you harder than Aaron Donald trained you. You know, so just pushing them to a different level that um, they never thought that they would get to. So it's um, I, I'm I'm obsessed. That's the word. I'm obsessed with developing kids. I'm obsessed with it. I'm extremely obsessed with it, and I love it. It, it means a lot to me that they reach out to me, and um, um, it, it really shows the respect level what I've done, what I've accomplished in the past, and um. Uh, I think they know because I got a wealth of knowledge, um, and they 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 try to pick my brain. They I get so many DMs yeah. um, all the time about, hey, what should I do with this, or who should I watch, or how can I perform this, execute this move better, um, you know, where should I hit my target at, you know. Uh, so all of those uh, questions are getting asked, and um, I'm having fun doing it, man. I'm having fun. I'm where I feel like I'm. Cause I tried to find my place in this world when I when I left Lambeau Field, mm -hmm. and and it was it was tough at first because I didn't know like what I really wanted to do. I knew I didn't want nothing to do with football anymore, and that was because I was emotionally like like I went through so much while playing the game. I needed a break from it, and when I came back, it was just it was like a breath of fresh air. Like, but now I get to teach these kids and get paid to get 
get paid to like teach, you know. So I'm I'm really excited about that. It's, it, it means a lot to me. Yeah. See, like, um, like you said, you needed time off and focus on your mental health, and um, I feel like you um, if it, it feels like when 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 you're back on the field, it feels like you're younger again with these kids when you're coaching them. Yeah. And you you you're like you. It feels like that you're part of. You feel like you're a, you're a player again with 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 these kids. I do, and and some of them tried me too. They they yeah. they, they, they coach. Hey, coach, you ain't the same no more. You ain't you ain't prime Michael White anymore. <laughs> so I had to I had to line it up with a couple of them. I actually got an old line, and I'm oh. like, even old line is not my position. But you still would not be able to get past me, son. They like, coach, you, you ain't you ain't you ain't young anymore and all. I'm like wait a minute I'm just 30 years old man I'm still in my prime yeah. <laughs> so 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 they challenged me so I had to put back on the cleats to let them know that hey man yeah um you know I'm, I'm still I'm still effective now you know <laughs> and uh they was kind of surprised how quick my feet was and how they couldn't get how they couldn't get past me so so uh I had to let them know and uh but it was it, it's fun man going out there with those kids man and them challenging me and I'm challenging them. And and not only that, you know, my college players, I listen to them when they come back, when they come back and, you know, and teach me and show me what their coaches are teaching them. And they they don't know, but they're making me a better coach. You yeah. know, like I said, I don't know everything, you know, but I know what got me far. And I know what other mentors, uh, defensive line mentors have taught me. So, Along with that, I sit back and they sometimes they're the teacher to me and they don't even know it. Wow. And I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there writing everything down. Like everything they're saying, I'm sitting there writing it down, learning, you know. So yeah. so uh, they making me a better coach. I'm making them better players. Is we helping each other, you know. So it, it it's it's been really it's been really fun and like I said, a breath of fresh air since I've gotten back around the game and um I know for a fact this is where I wanna be. Uh, until my last days on this earth. Oh, yeah, that's really amazing. Truly amazing, inspiring right there. And uh, let's talk about your book. Uh, it's called Grief Through His Eyes. And um, like I said, I mentioned earlier, I looked at some of the, the book online. I, I got to order my one myself and then um, later on. But uh, by the looks of it, it's really inspiring. And um, tell our fans, how did you come up with the title and what does that title mean to you? Well, for one, um, I'm a co-author in the book. Okay. Um, uh, the main, the visionary, her name is Deborah Fry. She's actually my grief counselor. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, she uh she put that book together, and um, it's also fifteen other amazing co-authors in that book as well. Mm -hmm. So it, it was it was it was a very it was a big team effort. Um, uh, those not only my story, even though my story is like you know, um, I would say probably stick out like a sore thumb because of where I've been, but Please check out those other stories, man, because uh, those individuals have went through uh, some things too, and teaching people how to turn their pain into purpose as well. So uh, uh, it was a great team effort. I felt like I was on the '90s Bulls mm. with these guys. Like we, 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 we did it. We did it. We did it. We did that, man. Like, um, like that. That book was. That book was amazing. Like um, so it was it was a great it was a big team effort and um, and um, I, I, we're winning right now. We're winning. We we are winning. We are we we did this, but I have a book coming out right after this called Generational Curse, yeah. and that's that's gonna be my first solo book. So um, but uh, grief through his eyes, um, the genius Deborah Fry, she came up with it, man. Um, amazing, amazing visionary, um, amazing coach. Uh, grief coach. Um, I would um, highly recommend any athlete who is going through a significant amount of uh, pain and and struggling to get over a uh, certain um, individual who, you know, just a certain grief in their life. Um, I would highly recommend them reach out to uh, my grief coach, uh, Deborah Fry. Um, she's an amazing asset to the world. Uh, and she is the mastermind behind this book. Um, and, uh, but it was, it was, it was, it was overall a team effort by all of us, like with all the co-authors. So not only check out me, but definitely check out all the co-authors in that book. Um, 
shout out to all those guys, man. They did their thing in that book, man. And it was a complete team effort. Like I said, I feel like I'm I'm on the '90s Bulls right now. We're doing numbers right now. Yeah, the Last Dance documentary. That's what it feel like right now. That's yeah. what it feel like right now. Everybody is telling their story. You know, I, Jordan told his story. Steve Kerr told his story. Like it, it, it that's kind of what this is. Yeah, you guys should it's just in book form. You guys should do a doc documentary also one time, one day. Hey, hey, hey! Let's put it together. If you hey. know anybody, you connect me with. Yeah. I can get on. The, I can get Devil Fry on the phone. We can we can make that happen for sure. Okay, let's let's do that. We'll, we'll set up something. Okay. We, uh, I I wanna I wanna I think you you uh your story needs to be in a documentary also in my opinion. I think I, and, uh, oh definitely definitely and the rest of your co uh your staff members too Zebra and um the rest of the crew members so we we gotta definitely set up something um for you guys I gotta see if uh I gotta see if uh I gotta talk to my team and see what we can do with a documentary for you guys. It'll be amazing. Yeah, and uh tell her um. Tell our fans where can they find the where can they find this book, our fans. So so text, so text um area code 920-930-1247. Send a text message the words I need one to area code 920-930-1247. I will personally autograph it and I will ship it to them. Wow. Cause I want to give them a special message, and then I don't want them to just buy the book, and there's no like I want to have a special connection with this individual. That why did you? I want to know why. It's a it's a special way that I connect with my fans and my supporters. Why did you buy this book? What does it mean to you? I want to know those things, and I want them to email me. You know, cause I I'm not I'm not too hard for myself. I. I like I'm not I'm not one of those guys that oh I, I it's gonna I'm not gonna respond to your email because I'm a popular guy no 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 I want you to email me I'm gonna answer every email and I want to talk I wanna I wanna know uh, your story you know so uh, why are you buying this book why are you supporting me and I want us just I want to have that special connection with my fans and that's what I'm building right now with uh, uh, the Packer fans right now and the Miami Hurricane fans because I played at the University of Miami in college. So um, I'm building that relationship with them because I don't want to, I don't want to just have fans. I want to have lifelong friends. I want my fans to be my friends. Well, wow. you know, I want to build a friendship with them. So, uh, yeah. So every book, if you want the book, uh, just text uh, area code 920-930-1247. Text the words "I need one" to that, and I'm a, I'm gonna sign the book, and um, and I'm gonna personally ship it off to you. Uh, so you hear that, fans? So please, oh, fans, wife. huh? Or my beautiful wife, she'll yeah. ship it off as well. <laughs> yeah. So tell, see, fans, now text that text uh, um text is saying I need one to the number nine two zero nine three zero twelve forty seven. Go text that right now. Go get your book. Go get his Michael's a book called "Grief Through His Eyes." Uh, it's re really, like I said, really inspiring. And uh, I'm gonna, I might text it myself too to get one. So I gotta, I gotta see. Um, but do you Me have time? Too. Yeah. Do you have time for a fan Q and A? Sure. All right. So we got some fan questions in here in our, in our app on my phone. Um, the first one, uh, one of our fans wants to know what advice would you give to a player like John Morant who's going. To who's going through a tough situation right now uh, with, with his stuff. And, um, but what advice would you give a player like John Moran? It's still young in the NBA. Um, first off, um, John Moran is a kid. People don't understand that. You know, um, he's a, he, he, how, how old is John Moran? I think 20 something in the twenties. Yeah. He's early twenties and he's a kid, man. So, um, I was, I was, I was, um, like that at one point, I actually caught a firearm charge. So he's lucky to not catch one. I actually caught one. Like I, I actually had a firearm charge and, and it just come from, you know, you coming from that area and you still hanging around the same people. So, um, my advice to John Morant, 
Uh, he's a great guy, great kid. I know he ain't mean no harm. You're not even thinking about it when you really doing it because that's the way we had fun in the hood. You know, yeah. a lot of people wouldn't understand that. And I understand that they don't understand that because if you don't come from that walk of life, you wouldn't understand. But I think he was just um, fooling around. You know, it's not like he took the gun out and robbed somebody or something like that. Um, but um, I think he needed to change. He, he got to realize he's a superstar. He's a role model. Um, I think he needs to um, change his people, places, and things, though, if he wants to um, continue playing ball and uh, continue being a, a a good role model. And because if not, you know, the individuals around him can cost him, yeah. you know, so because uh, the individuals around me cost me, you know, and um, I know all about it firsthand. So he has an opportunity right now because he, he don't have no gun charges on his record. You know, he, he has an opportunity right now to uh, fix that before it get worse. Um, I don't think he's a violent individual or anything like that. He don't come across as that type of individual. But hanging around the wrong crowd, can mm -hmm. um, you're just as guilty as them. So, um, you know, I think that uh, he should change his people, places, and things. I think that's the first thing he need to do and just focus on um, uh, dominating the game of basketball the, the best way he know how because he's, he's an amazing player. I enjoy watching him, and I want to see him for, for years to come. You know he's very fun to watch, so I'm um, uh, I'm looking I'm looking for him um, redeeming himself because I'm all about redemption. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to him redeeming himself, just like I redeemed myself, and um, just uh, coming back as a new person mentally, mm -hmm. and um, and um, yeah, just moving forward, just moving forward. Don't worry about what nobody say, because of course people gonna have something to say. Yeah. You know that's just people who. You know, they just want to yap their mouth on social media, but um, hopefully, um, he he um, he gets his mind right, uh, correct correct the situation, and that's the beautiful thing about life. Uh, people don't understand that we learn by failing. We learn by failing. Yeah. So, you know, um, I don't know, you know, what what was taught in his household growing up. I don't know that. And I can't speak on that because I don't really, I don't know how his father parented him or how his mother parented him. But um, he, from the looks of it, it looked like he came from a similar background than I came from. But like I said, I don't know what their parenting uh, philosophy was. But um, I would definitely, if I'm his father, I would tell him, like, um, no more, no more of that, you know, uh, whether it's a, because I heard that they said it was, the gun was actually a lighter. Mm -hmm. Yep. Somebody said it was just a lighter, actually. Oh, but yeah. Still, they're showing him, yeah, holding the gun also. So um he, he just need to he just need to stay out of that. Ain't nothing wrong with having a firearm, like for protection in your household or anything, but it shouldn't be used to be flashing on the internet like that. He he gotta he gotta know better than that. You know? he, so I'm hoping, he gotta yeah. hold himself some he gotta have some type of you know, you got to be held accountable for something like you, like you, if you're going to have a firearm, be a grown man about it, have put away. If, if somebody come in your house by any means, protect your family by any means. But as far as you out, you know, in the car and you just flashing guns. Now you got to, you got to, you got to think better than that. And he, and he has a kid also to think about also. Um, so that's an and not only is he, not only is he influencing his kid, but he influencing a generation of kids too that's looking up to him. So he got that to think about as well. But I love Ja. I hope yeah. Ja get back on the right page. And Ja gonna be all right. You know, he just gotta change some people, places, and things, and he's gonna be just fine. Yeah, and another fan question here. Uh they want to know some of your best moments as a football player. Best moments as a football player. Uh I I wish you could reply back to him asking what college, high school, college. Oh, college, program. college, college. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, college. Um, uh, my best moment was Florida State game. Um, when I uh when I was playing against Jameis Winston and Dalvin Cook and Jalen Ramsey and Derwin James, oh. was it? They had some very big names on that. Uh, Cameron Irving won a Super Bowl with um 
um, the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, so it, it was a, it was a, it was a, um, it was, they, they were loaded. They were loaded. Man. Um, I made a, I made a few key plays in that game, a crucial fourth down stop on uh, uh, Dalvin Cook, who is an amazing player in the NFL right now. Um, wishing him tremendous success. I, I've loved watching him over the years. He's done some great things, man. And um, uh, that I will out there also say um, the Virginia Tech game, because Virginia Tech, growing up in, here in Virginia, um, everybody want to go to Virginia Tech, yep. you know, because um, we we come, you know, Michael Vick went to Virginia Tech. He's from my area. Allen Iverson's from my area. He didn't go to Virginia Tech, but he's from my area. Uh, I don't know if people remember Ronald Curry, but Ronald Curry was like this big high school phenom. He was from my area. Plexico Burris, mm-hmm. Percy Harvin. Yep. Man, the list goes on, man, that, uh, from my area. D'Angelo Hall, you know, so uh, it's, a, it's a lot of – great athletes that come from my area and um but everybody growing up they would they would be lying if they said they didn't want to go to Virginia Tech and play for Frank Beamer. So um when I was in junior college, uh, they didn't recruit junior college players at that time. Mm. So um I was the number I was I was a top defensive tackle in the nation in junior college. I was an all American and uh, I had every college offer in the country. Wow. And um, I reached out to Virginia Tech and I asked them. I said, uh, "I would love to join. I would love to. I would love to come back home and join the team, man. I, I really love it." And uh, defensive coordinator Bud Foster told me um, they don't recruit junior college players, and I took that personal. I took that very personal, and uh, I joined the Miami Hurricanes, and we went up to Blacksburg on a Thursday night, and we um, destroyed them. 30 to 6. And I trashed the locker room at the end. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> um, that was a that was a great moment. And um and also a great moment was uh me becoming not only the first uh football player from here, but the first African American football player from Hampton Rose, Virginia to actually play at the University of Miami. Oh wow. Oh that's a, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Hmm. Well, wow. so what 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 does just to follow up on that? What does that mean to you? It would mean the world to me, and I actually didn't know I was the first one until uh, a couple of friends told me. A couple of other people told me I was the first one from my area, Hampton Roads, Virginia, to um to physically play that, to actually play that, and that was like a huge accomplishment. And not, and on top of that, like I said earlier in the interview, that um um I became the first uh one of my family to graduate college. Hmm. So that that was that was a another big football moment for me. Yeah. But know- playing against a lot of competition was um I played against some some great guys. Clemson, I played against Deshaun Watson. Yeah. That was a uh, unbelievable experience playing against him. Um and um played against, I played against a lot of great players, man. A lot of great players. Yeah and um Randy and- Gregory. Oh, Randy Gregory, okay. Hmm. I played against Randy Gregory. He was at Nebraska. Him and Amir Adula. They was they yeah. were they were great players there. And um so it, 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 I played against some great players. And uh, another fan question. Um they want to know what's it like, what's it been like for you sharing your stories on like shows like these and different platforms sharing your stories? And uh one of our fans wants to know what's that been like for you being on shows like this. Um, it's uh, it's been an amazing experience, and uh, I always love to be on shows like this because um, I get to connect with more people, um, mm-hmm. and uh, and hopefully, uh, because it, it was one show that I was on, um, actually, the listener was listening to me, and then they they dug more deep into my story, oh. and they ended up emailing me after that, and and told me that um, if they wouldn't have heard my story, they would have committed suicide. Oh wow. So every opportunity to do a show like this is um, I think about that. Who is the next person out there? Because because I know if that in, that person, that individual can uh, email me and tell me that I know it's another individual out there that um, is feeling that way as well. You know, so I always look for the I always look when an opportunity presents itself to be on a show like that. I never I never decline it because um just never know who I'm going to save. And I'm all about, I'm obsessed with saving and changing lives. 
Yeah. Hmm. Another fan question. They want to know who's the funniest teammate you played with. The funniest teammate. <laughs> Mate, um, Jamal Williams. Jamal, hmm. he's uh he was with me in Green Bay, and he's now he's currently with the Saints. Yeah, he just set that rushing record last year with the uh, Lions. Mm -hmm. He is he he is a character. He is funny. He is hilarious. He jokes. He's nonstop joking around. He like he don't stop joking. That man is full of life. Like he don't care what nobody thinks about him. He is full of life. He's laughing when everybody's in a serious moment. He's still laughing. He do not care. He he lives life, man. He is hilarious. He's in his own world. He's in his own world, and he's funny. He's very funny. So I would have to say, I would have to say Jamal Williams, uh, who's currently the Saints running back now. Yeah, and uh, we'll take two more fan questions here. And uh, they want one of them wants to know what what was your thoughts of seeing the Nuggets win the first title? That was pretty good. That was pretty cool. Um, cause I'm uh, I actually uh, jo the Joker. He um, I didn't see him play much because I, I really don't have time to watch TV like that. But I kept hearing his name, so I kind of you know started watching him a little bit more and. Uh, I love his game, man. Um, yeah. um, he and I, I love the person that he is off the court as well. So um, I was pretty happy for him in the Nuggets, and I and I grew up watching the Nuggets because I was a Carmelo Anthony fan. Oh, okay. So, uh, so um, you know, it, 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 it's cool to see them get their first title in uh, franchise history. So that was pretty cool, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm happy for the Joker. And Allen Iverson was on that team too, uh, Nuggets, when he played. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll take one more final fan, uh, fan question. They want to know who's your favorite player to watch now in the NFL. Currently, yeah. Now, um, a defensive line guy. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna go pass rushers, whether they like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, my favorite player to watch right now. In the NFL, I would have to say um, uh, I would have to say uh, Nick Bosa. Ooh, he's a, a he's a he's a very he's a very talented pass rusher. Um, very talented pass rusher. I love I love everything about his game. Like I said, I'm a defensive line guy, so. When I watch games, I'm watching the defensive line. Uh, so I would have to say Nick Bosa. He, he, I, he, I love his game. I love his game. I love how relentless he is. I love how he, um, he, uh, he takes his training to the game. Um, yeah, I, I'm liking Nick Bosa right now. Hmm. But Aaron Donald's the goat. Aaron sure. Donald, yeah. yeah. Aaron Donald's the goat for sure. But uh, Nick, Nick is doing his thing right now. How about um your former coach coaching another great one, Micah Parsons? Yeah, yeah, Micah, Micah's different, man. Um, that speed he possessed now, um, I, I haven't seen that at the uh, edge rush position in a while, man. Um, like I say, it's some, it, it's so many gifted edge rushers out there, but um, Michael Parsons' speed is is a little bit different. Like he, he he's fast. He's he's very fast and um. He's very gifted. Um, um, and uh, every year he comes back, he's learning more moves. So uh, his his pass rush is getting that more effective. Um, so uh, yeah, I even saw that he added the hump move to his game, yeah. the old Re the old Reggie White hump move. So so that's how I can see him evolving as a player. And um, and along with that speed, he's very dangerous. He's he's extremely dangerous. Yeah. So Michael. Uh... Michael Weiss, uh, thank you again for joining the show. It's truly an honor, amazing story. Thank you for sharing your story to me and, and, and our fans. And tell our fans where they can find you on social media. Uh, find me at uh, CEO Michael, M I C H A E L W Y C H E. CEO Michael White. CEO Michael White. And you can't miss me because you'll see the yellow background. So you can't miss me. Uh, CEO Michael White, and I'm looking forward to connecting with uh, 
any fan who uh, decides to follow me. Um, looking forward to speaking with you, uh, not just about football, but about life, um, decision-making, overcoming. You know, I'm an open book, so um, definitely looking to connect with amazing people around the world. Yeah, there you go. And um, tell Deborah if, uh, if, if you guys want to – maybe set up a call or something we can work on. Try, hopefully I'm going to tell my team or my coworkers to, to see how we, what, what, how we can do this documentary for you guys. So, um, um, I'll definitely tell Miss Deborah about this ASAP. Yeah. So, uh, thank you again, Michael, man, this is truly an honor and, um, I'll send you. So we're part of this foundation. It's called the Hugh Jackson foundation. I'm sure you know him. He's a former NFL coach. He's coaching at Grambling state university. Now, um, we're trying to help him prevent human trafficking and making sure the community stay safe. So we'll send you your send you the foundation so you can go check it out. Um, but uh, yeah, if you have, like like I said, uh, let's start working on together connecting with the with the documentary and um, keep up the great work coaching these kids and uh, and I hope uh, you get an opportunity somewhere soon in the college ranks or NFL ranks because you deserve it. Uh, you came a long way uh, and then going through a lot through your life, man. It's truly. It's really, really inspiring what what you came what came out of, and um, and now you're leaving living your dream again, uh, and uh, living uh, and coaching these young kids. So thank you again for coming on the show. It's truly an honor, and keep up the great work. And we'll we'll share we'll share we'll share this stuff to you guys, and um, and then uh, I have my team share everything on the platforms for you. So thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me once yeah. again. No problem. Thank you.